What's going on guys, All Bloods here, back with a little bit of different content today. We're having my Orlando bold predictions and final thoughts. So, without further ado, let's get into my bold predictions. My first one is no Crown Zenith cards will be in the top 8. While Crown Zenith has released a lot of new fun cards, uh, not a whole lot in terms of competitive play. Like, I know they probably already one of you guys commenting angrily, like, Zamazenta is really good, Sky Steel Sun's really good, and I know and I know, but... Honestly, those cards don't fit into every deck, and the only deck that they naturally fit into is Lost Zone Box. And Lost Zone Box, um, it just isn't the best deck in terms of uh, top 8 conversion rates. I think that might just be because um, that it's just so hard to play consistently and well for 16-15 rounds, and it's so it's tough to place in this top 8, because you basically have to play flawlessly to... Um, to, to go like 61, then to day two, you little room for mistakes. Considering if you drop one game with Lost Box, you are likely gonna have to, to t settle for a tie at best. So, I I think Radiant Eternus is a, is a fun card. We'll be more on that later. But I don't think it's terribly competitive either. Uh, at least in the short term, there's not a whole, like Sky Sealstone's one only natural fit is Lost Box, and it's kind of an inconsistent card in there. And also, which I'll get another thing I'll get into in a moment, is Z Zamazenta and Sky Seals don't, don't really fit easily into Rayquaza, which in my opinion is the strongest build of uh, Lost in Box. I, I know you can squeeze in that Z Zamazenta and Rayquaza because you do play a, a couple medals, but I feel like that sort of defeats the purpose because you have amazing Rayquaza as your big one shot attacker, and it, like then you're adding on Zamazenta, so. Doesn't doesn't really synergize super well, and I think it's kind of an empty spot. Uh, so let's get on to the next one. Best placing Vika Volt will play no Aerodactyl. This one's not terribly bold, uh, um, because Lugia playing Canceling Cologne now is basically the norm. So your Aerodactyl isn't going to get any value. So you're playing basically three dead cards. So fairly obvious. I don't honestly. Vika Volt could be a, an, an okay play because I feel like people are kind of writing it off a little bit because Aerodactyl is sort of not quite as good. Uh, I, d I think the Radiant Eternus Reggie Lucky build is sort of interesting or just like a straight like path to the peak. I'm going to Vika Volt U-turn 2 or even moving toward uh, kind of back to where we were with the old Drabion V-Star build. I, I all think those are potential options here. And my next bold prediction will be Lugia with the majority of day 2. Majority of top eight, but will not win the event. Uh, the first first statement is nothing, nothing surprising. We're giving the majority of of day two. It's been the case for every single regional that so a tempest has been legal. Top eight is a little more bold. Um, I believe there are three or four in the top eight of Liverpool, but I just think I think Lugi is extremely optimized right now. I'm sure there'll be some big scary counter deck that comes in, but. I, I, I don't know if the time is right for paralysis decks because not everything not everyone's playing bird keeper but just that cologne Raiko, this sort of gate keeps a lot of single prize decks that normally are, think that they have a decent time into lugia between stoutland and Raiko cologne you're pretty okay into most single prize matchups or at least you force them to play double manaphy which is not very good but i'm um, not winning the events uh, usually if i were odd reason i guess because maybe the decks always have a target on their back, but BDIF always does consistent and is always a safe play for points. But the BDIF of any format, there's are exceptions, usually does not win the most events. Just because everyone at those top tables will be trying to beat you. I mean, you can say that for any deck, but like everyone, everyone who's going to the event is going to have a game plan for Lugia. I can, I I can bring you to the event. But not everyone's going to be game playing for you. Some people will not respect me and not play Drapion. Or I could be playing Lost Box or Reggie's. I could be playing Reggie's and my opponents will not be playing Ice Q or, or Flying Pikachu all the time. So uh, people always going to respect BDIF. So it's always, I mean, always will have the high ceiling in in, in format. But also it's um, it's going to be tacked and countered for. So always be that, keep that in mind. Uh, Radiant Eternatus will be, best place in Radiant Eternatus will be top 64. I don't feel like this is terribly bold either. It Radiant Eternus is a very fun card. It's a very creative card. And there could be just some completely surprised Radiant Eternus deck. 
but I just think that the card is too inconsistent and too sort of gimmicky to be consistent enough to get very far into a tournament. And um, so then the best pay placing loss zone box will be Raikou Rayquaza. This is sort of doubling down on my whole Crown Zenith cards in top eight. Um, Rayquaza doesn't necessarily have any new cards that it needs to play. It can play Sky Seals on Drapion, but I don't think it's super necessary. Um, Zamazenta is sort of an odd fit, so I don't think this is terribly bold. It's, I mean, it's, it's sort of bold if you think, if you believe that these new cards will promote a new build of Lost Box to the, the top. But I think Rayqua Rayquaza is still the best build. No Reggie's in top 16. Uh, there have been kind of some murmurs in the community of like, oh, is this the time for Reggie's? Because people people love their Reggie's. Sort of, sort of reminds me of Frogs back in the day where I think murmurs like, oh, do, do we play Tina promo for this event? Everyone's talking about Frogs. And I I don't think it's the time is right for Reggie's. Most Lugias at least play Manaphy, usually play Don Sparse. Mew, the winning Mew has played Collab Stadium, which is sort of terrifying as a Reggie's player. Um, I mean, Vcable dying down is, is pretty nice for you, but, uh, also Z Zamazenta gives, uh, a solid attacker for Lost in Box to, to use against you. I, one, one sort of pro you have is Ice Q is, is definitely off the radar a little bit, and, but, like, any, you're, any sort of flying Pikachu control, you're gonna have to have a game plan into, uh, Yellhorn is not gonna cut it. I think you will, I, if I were playing Reggie's for this event, I would play Lost Vacuum, because, um, at least Sanders Controllist didn't have an, a great out to loss vacuuming off the parasol, but also Gudra just uh, showed out at Liverpool, and Gudra's an atrocious matchup for Reggie's. So I think the worse, the more you tech Reggie's, the worse it, it gets. And for Reggie's to succeed this climate, I seriously want to play like I want to play Yellhorn for Gudra. I want to play loss vacuum for. Um, uh, playing Pikachu, and I sort of want to play Cape. I, I kind of like a Cape, uh, a Cape Vacuum or Cape Yellhorn combo because against the control matchup, if I Cape my uh, Regilecki and then I can uh, Sonar back that Yellhorn, and I think eventually I can win a resource battle, but uh, I just think that's the more you tech it out, the worse it gets. So I don't know. I would not bring, bring Reggie to this event. And my final bold prediction is that Mew will win the event. Uh, it sort of is the only only man left standing. Lugia, I already ruled out. Lost Box. I think Lost Box could take it down too. But it's always just so hard for Lost Box to... I, I mean, like the top cuts... I mean, having more time in top cut is definitely favorable for Lost Box. But... Uh, I, it's it's just still very difficult. I, I guess I, it has not won a regional yet this format, and it only won like only Sables are won those two back in the Lost Origin format. So I think, I think me won the event. I think it's a very strong pick. I don't, I don't necessarily think that Drapion's is going to be everywhere, and, I don't know, I this event could go a lot of different ways. Uh, I could I could see Lugia winning. I could I could. Depending on how much Sky Seal Stun shows up, I could definitely see R RC Steraladon being sort of scary. I could see Lugia, the top Lugia players, completely dropping Canceling Cologne because they've already scared off Aerodactyl, like some next level 3D chess. Like, I know you're not going to bring Aerodactyl. I'm going to take out my Canceling Cologne and start playing better cards. I still like the Canceling Cologne because it, um, breaking through that Aerodactyl and also just being able to cut through Manaphy is really insane. So. I, I'd i be playing Canceling Cologne if I were bringing Lugia to this event. But if I were playing Lugia, I would definitely be on the lookout for some Paralysis stuff. I think some lists are short about respecting it right now. I do quite like Waterbox. Like, the Waterbox list I posted a couple a couple weeks ago now, I think is a really strong play. and would definitely be in my top three if I were going to the event. Uh, just Paralysis being really strong right now. It has a very favored Mew matchup. With the Sky Seal on Drapion into the Kyogre, Paralysis is, is enough to get you through that Lugia matchup most of the time. Between the Raikou can't just decimate you early on. Uh, you Ice Cube Wash in a Lost Box, which is sort of sus, but we try. Um, and yeah, you, so you're pretty good in, into the big three. You actually have a pretty okay control matchup. 
they do, they try to flying Pikachu you, so you have to use Aqua Bullet, but it's not like, you can three shot them with, with Aqua Bullet, which I know sounds horrible and scuff, but you, but you, it's not, you'd have to be prepared for it and just build up your Drizzles and Italians. And also, if they try, try to Eldegoss, they cannot Eldegoss loop you because you have Crabominable and you have the uh, tr Trigger Avalanche just to mill the, the top two. So I think if I were not playing Control, which we'll get to that in a moment, I would probably bring Water Box. And if I couldn't bring Water Box or Control, I'd probably bring Mew. Um, something very similar to the Control Mew list that won. Liverpool, I think, is a pretty safe play. But I'm not going to Orlando this year, unfortunately. Um, so that's it for the bold predictions and uh, picks. And now we'll get into my pick and some final thoughts. All right, I'm sure you guys already knew that I was probably get, that I was bringing control for this event. I've made a couple of videos about this already, and spoiler alert, I'll have another one this coming Sunday. So yeah, this is no secret that this is my favorite deck in format. I think it's super well, well rounded. I think you have a chance in just about anything. I think mainstream something completely scuffed out of left field could come and ruin your day. This deck is definitely not for everyone. You cannot like you have to really know your deck well to be able to close games. You have to play very well to not tie. So I think that if you are experienced with this deck, this deck probably has one of if not the highest ceilings in format in terms of overall power level. Um, the only one card I'm sort of uncertain about is the Echoing Horn. I do like it to bust that Luminion loop, but there definitely could be stronger cards that you can play. I'm sort of... I don't know. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that Lost Vacuum Regis will do decent at this event. Um, or at least people will play Lost Vacuum in Regis to be prepared for your um, big parasol, which we have nets, so we can sort of contend with that a little bit. But it's not super ideal. Uh, so, there's that, I guess, but, yeah, I, th I think this deck has just about everything into every matchup. I don't, I hate losing to the coin flip, so this deck does not mind whether it goes first or second. Um, you can, I also like decks that where your skill as, as, as a player can really sh show through that if I'm playing a Lugia Mirror match, I, and I lose the coin flip, there's very little that I can do to win. I'm going to be... I turn to turn behind, and I will probably lose. But if I'm playing a deck like Control, I can really, and if I, and I know I know my deck just by, better than anyone else in the room. I know I can play better than anyone else in the room. So I know that I can beat anyone else in the room. And that sort of is a thing that helps me, and I like to do is just, I do not necessarily care for, I, not, not saying I will never play BDIF, or I don't care for BDIF, I just don't, I don't, if I, I usually play to go deep into the event, not for points, just considering I don't go to very many tournaments. So if I want to go deep into the event, I'm going to have to, I mean, you, you will have to say I'm going to have to get lucky to go deep into an event, but also I want to, I don't have to rely on getting lucky. Like I don't want to have to win. Like I'm going to have to win seven Lugia mirrors. That basically means when I need to win seven Lugia coin flips, which it seems really like I'd rather, I'd rather put it in my own hands instead, instead of. A, the hands of a coin flip so uh enough of the ranting uh i would pick control was my number one pick water box would be my my second pick um thank you guys for watching if you're going to the event uh let me know down below what are you playing and um or if you want to tell me that's fine too uh i once again i will have zation v star coming out tomorrow morning and i'll have control on coming out another control video coming out on sunday I haven't decided what my other uploads are going to be but, um, yeah, this is, I'm excited to see how this event goes. I feel like the format's been pretty optimized, but we still have this format for quite some time. So, I'm sure there's still some optimization to be done. So, um, I, hope, I wish you guys the best of luck and safe travels if you're going to Orlando. And, I, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.